Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I thought I'd come on tonight and say a couple things. I was annoyed. Uh, I wasn't even going to do a video. Uh, and I was annoyed today. I'm just lately, it just seems like people just keep trying to push other narratives about what could have happened to Summer Wells. And, you know, I really don't believe that, you know, anybody else really is responsible for this except for those that are closest to her. And, uh, you know, you can believe anything you want. You know, everybody's trying to defend a lot. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people are trying to defend Fred Hill. Well, he shouldn't have put himself out there if he doesn't like being suspicious. And he shouldn't have said the crap that he did. I mean, you don't say a missing little girl, her scent comes all the way to your property. The sheriff never said that. Nobody else said that, but Fred said that. So that's pretty dang suspicious that you would even want to put yourself there in the child there in your yard. You know, it's really weird that you would tell your sister that Summer's clothes was found in the washing machine on your property. And and then you went on to say that they didn't... Uh, I heard you say they didn't... When, when the scent went up your property, that they didn't search a certain outbuilding. That they didn't even want to go in there. That was very suspicious. I don't think no monkeys took summer wells i don't care if you know you believe you know yeah there's articles about monkeys being in uh down there in tennessee fred talked about him but fred acted like a dang monkey could have took summer so give me a break okay give me a dang break i don't care if you knew about it, if you believe in monkeys there, whatever. I guess something happened a while back, years ago or something, where there was a monkey there. Well, or however many, because I don't really care about monkeys. Because I don't believe that any monkey took summer wells, okay? And even if there was monkeys there... It seems like they would want to migrate back south. They might have wandered up that way. But anyways, whatever. I'm done with that. But it really irks me that people want to defend Fred. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I don't defend anybody that lives around that area. Uh, it's like Summer was surrounded by a circle of strange people that could be suspects that could have could be responsible for her disappearance and you know the detention uh deception detective was on tonight and one thing that he said that is so true well one of the things he said a lot of things uh one of the things he said was is that they're not interested, Don and Candace are not look interested in looking at anybody else as a suspect. So that means they know what happened, and I believe that. I believe they know what happened. But I want to say something to you guys, because a lot of people, you know, are so dead set, and they really believe that Candace is the one that's responsible for this. And I do not. I do not. You know, Candace is the only one who showed any kind of emotion. I don't care if she was drunk while she was doing it. I don't care. She's the only one. Not Grandis. Not Don. Nobody else. Candace is the only one who showed emotion in this. And why does Don want to be so control and the head of this show he was not home supposedly 
So he should not want to be the, you know, spokesperson. When he wasn't even there, he has nothing to answer. Or does he? Uh, like I told you before, and I have talked about this many times, you know, it might be that Candace, that she knows and feels in her heart and believes that Don did something to Summer. She probably knows this, but I don't think she wants to do anything about it. If you've watched the Adam uh, Montgomery trial with Harmony and how he abused her, that girlfriend did nothing to help the little girl. She did nothing to help the little girl, but she was getting beat up too. And she was afraid too. It makes no, I'm not making no excuses for her because it disgusts me. She should have did something, okay? But you don't understand women who are in violent relationships and things like that. And Dot's been knocking Candace around for a long time. I, it was, uh, somebody had a video, and I don't remember who it was now. If it was Nature Lover, which is a good channel, uh, I don't remember who it was that had the interview on with Don. And I believe it was Chris McDonough and maybe I think Doug was there and uh, Don. But I seen a video where Don was so, uh, he was talking to them, but he was so aggravated that Candace was talking in the background. He does not want Candace on camera. He don't even like her on camera. Uh, I just noticed that it's really controlling. He's the only one that wants to be talking on YouTube. I'm surprised that he allowed her on Miss Daisy's channel. You know, it's not like he just allows her to go do whatever. And Candace has talked about this before. But I want to show you something a few things that I think are the very reason that uh, Don Wells probably did this. Everyone's innocent until proven guilty. But I want you to watch this for a minute. And this is when Candace was breaking down. Uh, they were talking to her. First, she got upset about Jenna. She felt like Jenna betrayed her and wasn't her friend and blah, blah, blah. But... You know, I want you to hear what Don says, and I want you to hear what Candace says in this. So, here we go. Let's go back to it. Oh. So. Yeah, you know, you're a horrible out here. Now, you have so many people yeah. out here that love you and that are rooting for you. And you have so many people that love you and that are rooting for you. Listen.
others because true friends loves and supports you unconditionally. And then she says, we love you, Kenya. You know, I'm not sure if you caught it, but uh, Don says that's why I've defended you all the way. Think about that for a minute, you guys. Why would he say something like that? I think that he, I think that he enjoys that people blame Candace. He said, I got seven alibis. Candace ain't got none. She's going down. He's the one that does all kinds of crazy things. He's the one that says, I'll see her in the resurrection. I don't know, but I have, you know, what really blows my mind here is that Don's sitting here. He's not, he's comforting her, but, you know, he's not like saying, Candace, we know you are not to blame. You're a good person. He never comes out and says crap like that. Hardly ever. He doesn't defend Candace. He yells at her a lot. Smacks her around. Treats her like cat crap. And I don't care what white boy in damaged goods over there wants to say. They can rattle their mouths all the time. And who cares? I don't really care. But Candace goes around spreading stories to people. And she did say on Miss Daisy's, everybody heard her say that they had an altercation and white boy had to step in. Well, then Candace is lying. Duh. I mean, uh, white boy and damaged goods, whatever your name is. Okay? So Candace lied, lied on Miss Daisy's channel. So you need to talk to her instead of everybody else and cutting down people and saying that they're making up lies when Candace did spread that lie. So maybe it was true and you don't want to and she doesn't she wants to stick up for you guys now. Who knows? But uh, I just really, you know, Don seems to really just throw Summer under, I mean, Candace under the bus when it comes to Summer. I mean, he has been abusive to her for a long time, and it, it just really bugs me, okay? Uh, I want you to just hear this for a minute. And I know you guys have heard it a million times, but it, I just want you to see something here. And I know I've discussed this like early on and I showed you this and I'm sure you've probably seen it too. But why I think that Candace suspected Don from the beginning, she even told Ernie that she even suspected Don. She said she was unsure about anyone. She didn't trust anyone. And I believed her. And I believe she was being genuine at that time. I really do. And I do believe she wanted to tell Ernie something. But she could not get it out. So. Uh, but anyways. We're going to just look at this. And hopefully you guys remember. And I know everybody's seen this a million times, but we're just going to, just this one part I want you to listen to. Just about after this commercial, I guess. Spare her life as long as hours around. Ever. Let's just back it up just a tiny bit. Okay, right here. And I'm sorry that you guys feel that way, but that's my baby, and nobody would ever treat her like that as long as I was around. Ever. She loves me. She loves the damn suit. My God, 
you know, I could never get over this look. The look she gives Don. Look at that anger. Look at that upsetness. She knows that Don did something. She knows. And that's what I think she's covering up. And when she said nobody would do anything like that to Summer, nobody would hurt Summer like that. She knows what it is, she said, like that. Nobody, nobody would ever hurt Summer like that. Not while I was around. So, she is telling us if you look at that and you listen to that, and I did slow this video down so you could, you know, we could catch it a little better. Sometimes things go too fast on here. So that's why it sounds a little more drug out. But the thing is, is that uh, as long as she was around, and that's what makes me think that Candace is, number one, I think Candace is high, hiding not hiding, but she's covering up the fact that she was a neglectful mother. She's covering up the fact that she was with Hunter. And I believe that Don got angry about this. I believe Don made up the story about the dog trail because he is the one who did this to Summer. I truly believe that. But, you know... She looks at Don with the most disgusting look. And I believe that she is saying that I was not around and somebody did this to Summer. Did something bad to Summer. And I believe it was Don, the way she looked at him. And I believe that's what she's hiding. I believe she's hiding the fact that she was a neglectful mother. I believe that she's hiding the fact that she was stoned that day and didn't know what to do uh, when she couldn't, when she was gone and she'd come back and Summer was gone for 10 minutes, she said, even though she was gone longer, she was out looking. And we know that she was out looking because Jody Sue said she was out looking and so did Fred Hill and others. So, uh, Don, he went to the shed. That's all he did. Which makes me believe that something was going on in the shed. And you know what I said? I was talking to my husband the other day and I said, you know what? I wonder now if the reason that Don went to the shed first was because there was some bad things in there that he had to get out of there before the police came looking in the shed. Whether it was drugs whether he was uh, doing something bad in there and Summer was in there before. Maybe it's like a hideout for him. Um, you know, when I was a little girl, uh, all the neighborhood kids would go to this old guy's house and he lived next to the ice cream place, like a twisty twirl thing, ice cream place. And he had a big wagon wheel in his yard. And we would... All the kids would come and we would spin on this wheel. Spin all the way around upside down. It was so awesome. He had it like on a post so it would just spin. And all the kids loved it. But he did that to draw kids there. He was pretty old. But he loved little girls. And he took us fishing. And he bought us any kind of candy we wanted. But he had a shed. And what he wanted to do was play around with us little girls in that shed. Uh, he would say things like to my girlfriends, well, he said it to us all. Do you, do you have to go pee? I'll hold you up while you go pee. And so sick. And I didn't know, but I felt very uncomfortable about that. And I told him no. But, you know, some people have a shed some of these freaks that do bad things to children, sometimes they have a little place that they go to do bad things. So, 
uh, it always made me curious if maybe he was hiding uh, something in the shed and that he had to hurry up and put it away or get rid of it before the cops came down there and looked in it. Or uh, if this was a place that did have some evidence of something bad in it. And was it a place that Summer went to with her father or anybody else? So it really bugged to me, the shed thing, you know, always has. But, uh, you know, when Don goes and reenacts and he does the dog trail thing and he, he talks about the scream, they asked him about the scream that Jody Sue heard, and he said uh, that he thinks they had her mouth covered, that maybe they were, like, smothering her, had her mouth covered, and she was trying to scream and couldn't, that's why, and that uh, she could really scream, that girl, and that's why I believe he, this is what he said. She could really scream. That girl could scream. Summer could scream. And so that's why I believe that she knew who took her. And uh, she did not scream. And it's very possible that Don pulled the fast one on Candace and took Summer out of there. And she probably knows now. But this is what I believe. I mean... Don't come at me. I mean, some of you totally believe that Candace did something. But why wouldn't... You know, I mean, look at Don wanting to be out here in public. And look at him trying to throw her under the bus. Blame her for everything. And he never stands up for her. Like, he doesn't say, uh, You people better stop it right now. Quit talking about my wife. She had nothing to do with this. He doesn't defend her. He doesn't do anything. And she's the only one that I've seen cry and be upset about this. I have not seen Don do anything of the sort. And that whole time that Candace was sitting there crying, he had no emotion at all. He had no emotion on the first day. I mean, he's like, I'll see her in the resurrection. And, you know, Candace said in this video... I mean, maybe I can find it. Let me look. He said, I don't want to... I don't want to think she's dead. Uh, oh, that. She does look at her looking at him. It's so easy to get. Want to find my daughter. She can possibly, you know, I, I, I don't want to think she's dead, but it's a possibility. I don't want to address all the negativity. Look at that look. Like, my God. So we want to find my daughter, she says. Yeah, well, uh, to me, Candace looks pretty shocked. And uh, I don't think this takes a rock scientist to look at. I mean, Don does not seem to be affected at all about his child uh, being gone. Uh, you know, it's really interesting. 
I was listening to a video where Dan said, uh, you know, someone would run every day. She would run down the driveway. She would meet me in the driveway wanting candy from me. And it's so strange because I always think, oh my God, that's where the scent ended. Is that what she did? Did she run down the driveway when Don pulled in? And her mom was doing something gone, maybe getting stoned. And he took her out of there. And that's why it ended at the end of the driveway. It's just so strange. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard that. But um, I just, you know... I just find it very strange. He seems to know a lot about this case, you know. Uh, I think this might be the one. Let me see here. It just always bugged me. Oh, listen to this. We're trying to cope. you caught that he could not be alone you know maybe you could say that you know he just wanted to check in with the police but you know what he could have also just wanted to uh see what they knew see what they were finding out because he is responsible for what happened I don't know. A lot of people will, you know, guilty people will stay around the cops in, in the search because they want to know uh, what they're finding out. So, but yeah, uh, what really bugged me when I was listening tonight is uh, just the fact that Don goes and he... Uh, does the whole dog trail thing. He, uh, you know, reenacts everything. It's like, seriously, he knows that where, you know, she's long ways away from here. Uh, there. Like, on this one, it says, hold on. What's her eyebrows doing? I think it's, it's doing that. It's at the very beginning of this. You ready? Show up. No. Listen, just listen to their words. If it ever plays here. Well, maybe it's going to, uh, right now my internet's acting out at this moment, so we'll just give it a, just give it a minute here, but, uh, just the way that he talks, he knows where she's at, he knows that she's a long ways away from there, he knows that there's no evidence, he knows that uh, she's gone. He'll see her in the resurrection. Uh, 
I mean, you don't hear Candace talking like that. You do not hear her talking like that. I've seen her talking, uh, showing Summer's clothes. I've seen her, which, you know, of course, that irritated me that she still, that she had the coat that supposedly Summer had on that day. And we don't even know if that video was taken that day. So, you know, this uh, thing ain't going to go or what? Maybe. That single eyebrow raise. Uh, it's at the very beginning. Okay, listen. And roll it as far away as they could from this area. Uh, she didn't walk away from this property by herself or off this yard. <laughs> I think kind of it was going too fast with that. And or as far away as they could. I, okay. I think someone came up here and grabbed her and ran down the hill. I think so too. And threw her in a car and drove as far away as they could from the service. Okay. So he be truly believed that he believes that Summer's fire from this area uh he has no hope he's never had hope uh you know this photo's always bugged me because and even prayer garden brought it up that and don did too he said that was the last day uh that he seen summer and he just had that moment that feeling that you know, something was going to happen to her, and she knew it, too. And it really does look like he's saying goodbye to her, and it looks like some are saying goodbye to him. And who knows? And maybe the suitcase that was packed that Marlena Crawford uh, said, because her little girl was there that weekend, maybe uh, it was true that what her daughter said that they were packing a suitcase for summer because she was going on a trip and maybe she was going on a trip you guys but i don't believe it's to put her somewhere somewhere safe there's no way if don and candace come on let's have some common sense here if don and candace uh gave her to someone don would not be saying i'll see her in the resurrection he would not be saying that uh, he believes she's dead. And this is how it's been from day one. And it's really, really quite a shame. If the father doesn't have hope, then uh, I don't think people should uh, be too hyped up. I mean, I would love to see Summer Wells found alive. That would be everybody's best hope. But really, after three years, it really sounds crazy. And uh, the way Don just expressed that he believes some, someone came up that hill, grabbed her, ran back down, and got into the vehicle, and took her far, far away. So it seems like Don knows the kidnapper, in my opinion. And everybody's innocent until proven guilty, but I believe that the kidnapper is her own father and her mother was not doing what she was supposed to be doing. She was actually being very irresponsible. Number one, being with a minor, a young kid, partying with him. And God knows what else. And number two, uh, taking her daughter in a situation like that. Uh, CPS was supposed to come the next day. And I believe that they told him, you better have her ready. Because, you know, we need to see her. And, uh, you know, 
There's no way I believe Candace knows stuff. But to me, I feel like the reason that she uh, looks guilty, acts guilty, is because I believe she's covering for Don. I believe that she totally s suspects him. If she doesn't know already, I believe she totally suspects him and knows that he did something. But maybe she does not want to say anything. Maybe she doesn't want to get him in trouble. Maybe he's holding something over her head. And he's abusive to her. Uh, you know, my ex used to threaten me all the time that he was going to unalive me. And I was scared to death of him. So... You know, he said, you'll never get away from me. And if you do, if you even think so, you know, I'll do such and such to you. So, and it happens a lot in abusive relationships that women are, you know, unalive because of abuse. So, and uh, Don's been really getting worked up and uh, he's got a temper and he treats women really bad. And he treated his sister very bad. And, you know, blaming a five-year-old. And you know what else, you guys? Um, so I was listening to this story of this guy who... Uh, oh, I'm just trying to think of the name of that... Uh, Anyways, this guy, he assaulted and murdered a girl. But you know what his past history was? Stealing, robbing, and uh, he did stuff when he was young to someone, to a child. So, you know, it's just really strange, you know, like to, uh, uh, the ages was around six years old, the age of the girl. And that was w when he was younger, but when he got older, he ended up kidnapping a girl, a woman, not a woman, but a 17 year old and, uh, you know, violated her and unlived her but you know some of these things that happened in the past you know some of these terrible things that men women whoever pre predators do in the past uh i'm sorry that leads to more bad behavior and i believe that with all my heart that your past determines if you don't change and you don't want to change, your past is going to determine your future and your past behavior, excuse me. And we've seen what the past behavior is here. But, you know, you guys, you have a right to believe whatever you want. I just truly believe that Don snuck uh, somewhere out of there. And, you know... Don't you find it weird that everybody did find it weird when Chris McDonough went to the house after they had did this whole long interview at the water, Chris and Candace, they did this interview at the water watering place where Summer went swimming and then they came back to the house and she let him in and that's when he did the whole house thing. Well... Everybody thought it was strange that the TV was on in the basement and Chris wondered if Don had been there in the shed. And I do believe that he was there. Why would her TV be on in the middle of the day when there was no kids there? There was no one home, supposedly. And you're going to leave your TV on and your door is unlocked. And, you know, I just really find it strange. I just felt like Don had been downstairs in the bedroom. So, 
I don't know, you guys. This is my opinion only. But I get really aggravated when some channels want to go run with all this nonsense. This person, that person, this person. You know, Fred Hill has changed his story so many times. And Ziggy gets so mad about it. And, uh, you know, she defends him all the way. And I don't have anything personal against Fred. I don't think he's a bad person. I have not made a bad judgment. I, I'm not making no judgment on him. What I'm saying is the things that he has said has put him in a bad light that makes him look like a suspect. So and there's only a certain amount of people that were around Summer that day who would have had opportunity or time or you know, be able to do this if anybody else did it so they could be a suspect. But I believe that it's not anybody else but uh, Dad. And that's just my personal opinion. And that's all it is. Uh, you know, it, it just disgusts me. I don't understand why nobody's been arrested. Nobody's been pressured very much anymore. I really feel like TBI really needs to bring them in again and talk to them, the parents, again. So, and Grandma, again. And Hunter, again. And I do believe uh, the timeline for summer going missing started at 3.30. And why do I believe that? Because that's when uh, Don claims that everything was uh, erased from their phone. That's when it started. That's when it ended. Excuse me. They erased everything from 3.30 on that day. I What I believe happened is that TBI downloaded it. And then they blocked it or put it on some kind of thing in their uh, phone so that they could not access it or change it. That's what I believe. I have heard of the police putting people's phones on airplane mode. I've heard of them uh, downloading information, keeping phones. So maybe they gave them back but just somehow blocked out that time frame. But they know. They have it. But I do find it interesting that it was started at 3... It ended at 3.30. You can say the crime started at 3.30. You know, is what I would say. The crime started at 3.30, whatever happened to Summer. And the cops know that. And I feel like they have more information than they have let us know. But they're not going to do anything about it until they find out for sure where she is or what happened with something credible. Even more. I don't think they're going to say anything or expose anything. So, But yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take. I, I hope it doesn't turn into a cold case. That's, you know, Leslie and TBI have said they will not let this turn into a cold case. And Leslie said that they find anything about Summer Wells, they will come and tell us. They will come out and let us know. And I believe that. All I could do is pray that uh, they will find Summer somewhere. Or some kind of big tip comes through that knows a lot or that one of them will break, whether it's Grandma, whether it's Candace. I hope somebody breaks and comes forward and tells us what happened to Summer Wells. But anyways, you guys, you know, it doesn't help to go off in 5,000 different di directions and listen to a bunch of nonsense on YouTube about what could have happened to Summer. There's only very few possibilities here, okay? There's only a certain amount of people that was in their inner circle and around them. And I believe that the only people who know 
and have any responsibility is the ones that some are lived with. So, okay, so that's all I got to say, you guys. You know, I love all your comments. I love the things you guys say. Uh, and I appreciate them a lot. And I thank everyone for being here. Please hit the like and, subs and subscribe button if you haven't yet. I love all you guys. We're going to keep talking about summer wells until the cows come home. Till something happens. Because I don't care. I'm not going to give up on her. As long as I can do this, I will talk about her. And if you have any information about summer wells, uh, she's missing from Rogersville, Tennessee. She was five years old when she went missing. It's been three years, and there's been no sight of her, no nothing. But um, when Summer went missing, she had that shaved head. And uh, this is her, too. She's really super cute. She's a beautiful little girl. She's always got marks on her, really bad ones than that, on her face there. And also, if you notice, on her mouth there, there's dirt, but there's also marks. And there's dirt, but also scabs, sores, marks. Looks like that's a bite mark up there. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's a little girl that went missing. Summer Moon, Utah Wells, from Rogersville, Tennessee. If you have any information, please call one 800 TBI find. Anyways, you guys, I'll check in with you soon. Take care. Have a good week. Good Sunday tomorrow, today. I love you all. God bless you. Good night. Peace.